Welcome back. Millions of Muslims undertake a month of intermittent fasting in observance of Ramadan as fasting takes place during daylight hours from dawn to sunset. What are the similarities and differences between intermittent fasting and the Muslim fast? I speak with Nazima Qureshi, a registered dietitian and nutritionist, about the health benefits and hazards of abstaining from food for an extended period of time. Nazima, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Thank you for having me. Now, you know, the reason why I want to look at this topic is that when I was going to, to school and I, you know, participated in different activities, uh, I noticed that people would be shocked when I said I was fasting as a Muslim. So, I mean, I would have people running and giving me chairs, you know, worry that I would fall down, you know, I'd faint or something like this, but I, I was perfectly fine. And I tried to explain to them, I'm perfectly fine. And now we see with the, ri the popularity of intermittent fasting that a lot of people are doing this and they're seeing the health benefits of it. Um, so tell me a little bit about the comparison between intermittent fasting and, you know, a Muslim fasting, or you know, there are other cult there are other religions that have a fasting period as well. So, what's what's the similarity or difference? So it's quite interesting the time we're living in right now because, like you said before, fasting was like this foreign thing, but yeah. now we're slowly starting to see research that there's actually benefits, and a lot of people are kind of jumping on the intermittent fasting um, bandwagon. So with intermittent fasting, there's a lot of variations. Um, so one could be you know restricted fasting through the day. So you know it could be eight hours of eating and then 16 hours of not eating. So mm -hmm. that's one of the more common ones. Um, they can also be kind of multiple days. So you're going multiple days without eating, but then you're still having water. A lot of times with the intermittent fasting, um, you're still allowed to drink water and you know maybe take supplements. Mm -hmm. So that's the bigger um, kind of the biggest difference yes. with intermittent fasting and, and our religious fasting. Where religious fasting, there's no there's no water, there's no intake of any sort of supplements or anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's a significant difference uh, where and that's where you still see people saying not even water when <laughs> exactly. you're fasting right <laughs> so so that's a big piece um, but it's interesting because we because we can actually extrapolate a lot of the health benefits that you were seeing with intermittent fasting to our religious fasting as well mm -hmm. So what are the what are the health benefits? So with um, a lot of the studies that we're seeing with intermittent fasting, there is a mix. So there are some that are done on animals as well as human studies. So you know the research is still emerging, but um, you know one of the the benefits that we are seeing is weight loss, of course. So one the benefit you're going to get of weight loss is the actual fasting itself, um, because there's actually a change in your hormones that happen. So how your the hunger levels, um, the the hormones that are associated with your hunger levels and your appetite, those are kind of um, adjusted when you're fasting. Another benefit is also how you're eating on the non-fasting hours. So mm -hmm. this is where I find with religious fasting where after 30 days yes. people still gain weight is because they're fasting but then in the non-fasting hours. At the end of the hours, day they get really hungry. Yeah, <laughs> they get really hungry and they end up like overcompensating and eating more calories than they would in a regular day. So that's mm -hmm. why we're seeing a lot of like weight gain after 30 days of religious fasting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessarily getting hungry but it's like the social aspect of eating because everyone comes together to eat and it's sort of seen as a festivity so people do overeat. Exactly and, and I mean one day of that is okay but like 30 days in a row <laughs> is fine and not only um, weight gain but then you also see effects of like kind of feeling sluggish and, and very low exactly, energy. Exactly, yes. Um, um, and, and this is a time where we're trying to strengthen ourselves to do the most kind of, um, you know, worship. Spiritual worship. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But um, we see where we're feeling really low energy. So how you eat in the non-fasting hours, both for religious and intermittent fasting, is just as important as, you know, not eating for several hours. Mm -hmm. So what's your advice in that respect? What, what should we avoid and what should we um, tr try to embrace? So you food? should definitely have a strategy. You shouldn't just, um, you know, you shouldn't just focus on the fasting piece. So when, um, you know, you do want to have limited amounts of food so you can there is a bit of leeway about uh, with how many calories you'd be able to eat to when you're fasting because obviously you haven't eaten all day but it's still not kind of you know open gates for as much food <laughs> as you want so um, you know kind of uh, similar to the food guide plate actually so a quarter um, protein quarter carbs and half plate veggies um, I actually like to open my fast with a bowl of fruits first mm -hmm. uh, and then some water as well I mean for religious fasting because we haven't been drinking water um, I do like to take a bit of a break um, before I actually get into my main food and I find that really helps with making me feel a bit energized. I find going straight into like a full mm -hmm. meal um, almost makes you feel a bit sluggish about an hour later. I guess maybe something about the digestive system it needs some time to process. Yes I do find and then I find the fruits are kind of the best. They're they're very simple sugars and they're easy to kind of digest and they almost like wake you up mm -hmm. um, almost like within the 15-20 minutes you'll see a, a huge uh, a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Now are there some people that don't lose weight? Let the, let's say they follow 
this, this procedure that you've mentioned. But something about not eating for that period of time uh, makes them unable to lose weight or get healthy. Right, so one thing to keep in mind is intermittent fasting or really any sort of kind of diet is not for everyone and mm, it's really okay. important to speak to a dietitian to figure out a plan that works for you, especially if any health conditions are involved. So, you know, um, diabetes or if you're taking certain medications, you want to make sure you're speaking to a dietitian um, as well as your doctor before you start on any diet. And I personally find with intermittent fasting, it shouldn't be the first choice for kind of um, changing your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if one of your goals is weight loss, you know, it's really important for you to develop a healthy lifestyle rather than just turning to intermittent fasting. Because mm -hmm. what will happen is it'll just be another crash diet where you're able to do for a few days and then you're back to your regular way of eating. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I see that some Muslims, they, they practice fasting every Monday and Thursday and they do that for, for years, maybe for their lifetime, um, in accordance with the Prophet Muhammad's practice. So that's a form of intermittent fasting that they've maintained throughout their life. Yes, absolutely. And this is a kind of a lifestyle change that you're seeing. So you'll definitely mm -hmm. see benefits of that. Um, and so if you're doing this uh, Monday and Thursday, what you're eating in those non-fasting hours will really kind of change the way um, you're feeling during, uh, during that fasting and then also show you some benefits as well. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of activity level, would you have to decrease your activity level while participating in intermittent fasting? So there's a lot of factors that go into activity level. One is were you active beforehand, right? And I find with uh, religious fasting, a lot of people will, will want to start being active yeah. <laughs> in the month. So first of all, you need to be active before kind of introducing any sort of fasting. Um, so if you are, it could be safe for you to be exercising dur during um, your fasting. Another piece is the timing. Um, so it works out differently and, and it, depending on the person. Um, the biggest piece with religious fasting is you're not able to drink water. Right? Mm -hmm. So with intermittent fasting, you'd still be able to drink water. Um, so what you can do is either uh, before starting your fast, that's a good time to exercise, or right before um, opening your fast or breaking your fast is another time you can exercise. Mm -hmm. now, what about you know working and you know going up, going about your life? Do you think it would be somewhat restrictive? If, if one is fasting? So in terms of intermittent fasting, like I said, um, I don't think it should be the first thing that you should do if you're trying to change, improve your healthy lifestyle. So mm -hmm. first incorporate kind of um, healthy um, eating patterns, your meals um, should be kind of addressed. And then incorporating intermittent fasting, you may see um, some benefit. And you may see in the beginning where it is a bit challenging. And that's where you can kind of adjust um, how you do intermittent fasting. So, you know, you speaking to a dietitian can help, but also on your own, you don't have to be as extreme. So even if you kind of just cut down your, say your dinner is a bit earlier and you don't eat any meals um, after dinner, mm -hmm. um, and then that can be considered intermittent fasting. So the next meal you're having is in the morning at breakfast time, and then you can slowly push the breakfast a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much the easiest way to do intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, how, do, how does this relate to societies long time ago? I know some people have said that intermittent fasting is similar to like a hunter-gatherer sort of society. Do you know anything about that? So, I mean, I find, you know, throughout our life, we're going to see a lot of different patterns of eating, mm -hmm. right? But, uh, I mean, I don't know how I feel about applying the way we ate. Hunter like, you know, hunter, yeah, we, I mean, we have technology, we have a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing in our community right now is a healthy lifestyle. So whatever that means for you and you're able to, um, you know, it's a sustainable habit. So for some people, intermittent fasting is not going to work for them, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be healthy. So this is just one way um, of eating healthy. But it's important to find what works for you. And that's what the thing with nutrition. It's a very personalized approach. It's not kind of a, like a quick fix. It's not a, mm -hmm. a Band-Aid solution. So, you know, just kind of finding the latest diet on the Internet is not going to be the solution for you if you, if you just try and, like, keep trying um, diets one at a time. Mm -hmm. So, Nazma, can you give me some advice about, you know, what are other alternatives? Like, let's say intermittent fasting doesn't work for you. What other sorts of options would you consider? So with, um, you want to kind of look at your, your current eating patterns and then based on that and also your health goals and your health if you have any health conditions. Mm -hmm. Based on that, that's where you can start applying um, principles. It's, it's very difficult for me to make a general yes. statement because mm -hmm. it is very um, personal. But like I said, um, you know, the first thing is looking at your vegetable intake. Regardless of what, you know, your health condition is, what your health goal is, we all need to eat more vegetables. So mm -hmm. if there's one takeaway you can take is just add more vegetables at lunch and dinner, half a plate right this is like the first step the second very easy thing that we can do is drink more water mm -hmm. so a lot of times we you know people will actually start eating healthy but then they forget about what they're drinking so juices that are sometimes masked as healthier 
um, you know, the, there are fancy coffee drinks that end up having like a, insane amounts of sugar. Like the, the, this sugar really adds up. So mm -hmm. swapping out all your sugary beverages for water, anywhere from eight to 10 cups a day, that's another um, huge improvement you can do. Um, and then the third piece is getting in some physical activity. So as little as 10 minutes a day can show you a lot of uh, significant improvement and benefit. Nazima, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Hey YouTube, we hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.